Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's Jeremy Medeiros and JP Ruja here out on Nonsuch Island in Bermuda um, on the 18th of May 2022. Um, it's been a little while since we've done our last uh, update on our Kahal Cam chicks. Um, and Kahal Cam 1 is, you know, really nearing, you know, his, his rushing to completion now, he's nearing maturity. Um, he'll probably start coming out to exercise at night anytime in the next uh, two or three nights and such. And I would say, well, I'll know more when I see him, but um, it looks right now like he might be less than a week away from fledging. We'll see. Um, this is also an important um, time because uh, 2022, it marks the first time that we're going to be deploying um, uh, advanced, uh, very small GLS tags on the legs of fledgling birds. Uh, we've been uh, deploying them on the adult birds uh, at least three times in, in the last 10 years or so. Uh, we've got a pretty good idea, you know, these, these are accurate, um, uh, you know, locational tags that can determine the position of the bird. They archive the data, they don't transmit it. So basically you deploy it on the bird. Um, it takes daily position fixes uh, for up to 32 months or more. And then it archives the data and goes into a standby mode. Um, so we know that Cajal chicks take at least three to four years um, out at sea after they fledge, before they return as adults to find their own nest and their own mate. Uh, so that should just about take it through to the return of these chicks um, even if it's another year or so well the tag is in standby mode and when you recover the bird you just take the tag off put it into a special reader run a program on your computer and it will throw up um, all the locations the daily locations that the chick was uh, for that 30 to 32 month period that the tag was actually operating so um, it's pretty groundbreaking stuff and to my knowledge it's the first time it's been done on a gadfly petrel it has been done on shearwaters and some other seabird species before uh, fledgling birds um, but up until now we've only really done it on the adults because we know they'll get we'll get them back in hand every year so uh, we have no idea where the chicks go do they go to the same place as the adults? Do they go to entirely different areas? There is some thought that they explore much more widely to, to get a, a map in their brain of all of the productive areas in the ocean at different times of the year that they then use for the rest of a very long lifespan, up to 40 or 50 years or more. So this will really be um, an important thing of really finding out a very important part of the developmental period of a young cow's life. Okay, with all that said, I can't wait to see um, our Cajal Cam chick. Well, this is quite a different bird uh, from the last time that we took it out of the nest. Uh, then it was essentially a complete round ball of natal down or fluff um, with the beak sticking out of one end and the first inkling of the tail and wing feathers out of the other. And now it's completely down free on its top side you know on the back the rump uh, the tail is completely down free the wings of course and the face of the bird um, is now you can see the pattern that the adult bird has so it's really just on top of its head its neck like a collar and its flanks and belly that's the only parts that still have down on them more or less now this bird is in beautiful condition it has um, developed very quickly in its final stages simply because it's been fed so well by the parents. Uh, the parents of both of the Cajal Cam chicks have just done an exceptional job in caring for their chicks this year. Now it is quite warm and sunny out here so I'm gonna get them into the bag fairly quickly so we can take a closer look at them. There we go. Nice freshly washed bag for you. Okay, wow, I just can't believe how much this bird has matured um, in the last week or so. It's just, they're like that. They're just this giant ball of fluff that just grows bigger and bigger until it's about the size of a big cantaloupe. And then all of a sudden, in about a one-week period, all that down starts 
coming off. The, the chick actually actively preens it off. And um, this beautiful, sleek, streamlined seabird suddenly starts to come out of the middle of it. Okay, so it is 330, looks like 334 grams, and that's very typical. It's now losing weight. It has to lose weight to be able to fly out to sea. So 334, so that'll be 314 grams minus the weight of the bag. Once you subtract the weight of the bag, I should say. So 314, at its peak, it reached about uh, 427 grams, I think. So now the next thing, this will be the real thing that tells me how soon it's going to be fledging. And whoo, the, the ruler is actually quite hot from being in the sun. So I'm just going to... Luckily, it cools off very quickly. And let's see. Wow. 247. So this, this bird is essentially ready to start exercising. It could come out of its burrow for the first time tonight. So I think um, it'll be very important from now on to check the surface cam at night, uh, just in back of where the Cahal Cam 2 entrance is, because that's where this chick will probably come out to exercise, you know. I would not, I, I'd be surprised if he did not come out tonight to exercise. Um, that is, you know, quite advanced let's see 252 so it's it's grown r ridiculously i think the last time i weighed it was about uh four or five days ago and it was about 225 so you know it's just it's growing at the rate of about a centimeter every two days the wings at this point okay so next thing i'm going to do and this is this is sort of a one-time thing, you know. I, I don't do it very often. I'm just going to check the tarsus, or the leg, lower leg length, because it's essentially that of an adult right now. Is is not being a hundred percent cooperative. Well, I can't say as I blame him. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so twenty-seven. Point two, which is exactly the same as an adult. So, and at that point, you know it's ready to be banded. Okay, and the plumage assessment I can actually do from here. I know what it is already. And it's these are the parts of the bird that are now down free. And it's F for face, W for wings, T for tail, S for shoulder, and R for rump. So... Yeah, this bird is very advanced. Okay, so first order of business today, what makes this a truly special day in the life of this bird is this is the day he gets his permanent bling, more or less. His uh, permanent identification band that he will then have for the rest of his life. And it's ink alloy, it's a special uh, nickel-based alloy um, that's designed to be corrosion resistant, extremely hard, long wearing, and it's designed to last for the life, entire lifespan of long lived seabirds in a very salty marine environment. So, because this is a chick and a known age bird, we know everything about it, I'm going to ban this one on the left leg. As adults, if, if I get an adult in hand, I don't know how old it is or where it originated from. Those are always banded on the right leg. It's a good, simple, non-invasive way of just telling if it's a bird that we've seen already that is, you know, that is, um, you know, has already passed through our hands. We know the nest number. We know the parents. We know the island it came from and everything. Okay, so as quick as anything, the band number is e 0 819 E0819. So I'm going to write that down very quickly. So E0819. Okay, now the clock is running because the thing I'm going to be doing next is deploying the GLS tag on the other leg, on the right leg of the bird. And basically, 
It's two zip ties that attaches. This is the actual tag on top. It's like just the size of a fingernail. So it's, it's only about 1.1 grams. And then it has a special, um, you know, very flexible and soft, um, like uh, polyethylene plastic that's UV resistant. It won't get brittle. It's actually, these are actually cut out with uh, use of a 3D um, printer. And uh, so they're, they're a printed product. And then there's two zip ties, one that attaches the tag to the little sleeve that fits around the leg. And it basically opens up like this. You slip it over the leg of the bird and then you close it. And then you use a second zip tie to close it up on the bird. And these we found can stay for years in a bird. There's no chafing, there's no marks on the leg. It's like me wearing a, a, you know, a wristwatch or something. It's just, you know, no real problem to the bird. So I'm gonna turn the bird around. And I think because it's still so downy on its underpart, um, actually, just so I can see what's happening, this doesn't, of course, harm it at all. It doesn't harm the, the mature feathers come in. I'm just gonna trim a little bit of the down from around the leg, just so I can, see what's you know do it a little bit more efficiently and safely for the bird obviously and he's like don't cut my down whatever you do but of course it's all going to be off in in a week or so anyway so okay so everything looks good um now the first order of business is to cut the zip tie off of the one tag that's already attached it. I keep this so I can put the number of the tag on. And then, let's see, open up the sleeve. Yes, and this, for this, for to do this easily, you need a minimum of three hands. So, so doing it with just, just one pair of hands is always a bit of a challenge. So there we go. It's okay. And of course, the bird doesn't particularly feel cooperative. There. And there we go. Now he can kick and kick. It's not going to come off. So all I have left to do is to basically bring this around. It's okay, matey. Yeah, here we go. Make sure no down gets done. Yep. There. Okay. Just make sure I tighten it up as far as it'll go. There, and you can see. So we have a very neat little arrangement. His, of course, not being terribly cooperative. If it's now fit on his leg for the next three years, more or less, three to four years, make sure that it's nice and tight. Yeah, but not too over tight. So I'm just going to give one more little tug to make sure. Perfect. And last but not least, cut it off as flush as possible so there's no sharp edges. Perfect. So there we go. There's a, And you can see it's nice and loose on the leg. You know, it can move freely and such, which would be good. I'm going to trim a little more down because I don't want any of the down to get tangled around it if at all possible. It just cleans it up and he's getting rid of that down anyway. So basically I'm helping him. I'm helping him to do that process. There we go. So there we go. He's got his bling and he's got his tracking tag. And uh, hopefully um, we have a very good record of Kahal Cam chicks returning as there's at least three of them that now we've recorded as returning to none such in the other islands. Um, and um, in about three to four years, then this bird um, should return, hopefully, and we'll be able to, down, you know, take that thing off of its leg and see what data is contained within it. Now, the final thing I'm going to do, mate, and this is mainly to sex it. And you can see he's his about reaching his limits of tolerance. You know, they get a little bit rambunctious at this time. I just want to check its bill length. So I can get a good idea if it's a male or a female bird. And because the closer you can do it to fledging, the more accurate 
There we go. Yep. Okay. All done, mate. All done. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, my first, my very first hunch of this was, was is confirmed. I think uh, that this bird is a female. I think that's my final prognosis. I thought it was a female at first, and then I thought, well, maybe it's a male because it was developing so fast. But now that it's essentially fully, you know, developed, she, more or less, you know, it, it's got a fairly short bill. It's like 27 point, 27.7 millimeters. So, yeah, a male normally will be somewhere about 28.9 up to about 31 plus. So, our little guy, we've got had a good look at him. Uh, confirmed is probably just a day or a night or two away from coming out to exercise and that he'll probably be fledging certainly in the next week perhaps as few as I'd say the next five to eight days that's my uh, prognosis he's been banded um, with band number um, E0819 and he's been fitted with um, it's band on one leg and GLS tag on the other leg and the GLS tag number is CE321 so um, all very exciting um, we're doing 37 chicks with these tags this year so it's going to be very interesting to see how they all do so I'll put them back in his nest where he can sort himself out and preen himself and everything else we've cleaned the cobwebs off of the camera lens and so everything er everything looks great Okay, put the roof back on his house. Fantastic. Well, yeah, that's very exciting uh, to do that, um, particularly with the tags. We've just really never, oh, it's just a educated guess was our best way of determining where these chicks go for a, a big chunk of their life. It can be uh, three to four years for male birds and anywhere from four to, to six years for a female bird that they're out at sea, uh, possibly never seeing land, we don't know, but eventually they will, um, they will, you know, head back here to Nonsuch or these other nesting islands to find uh, the males to find their own nest and the females to find mates. And once they pair up, then uh, they'll probably be together for the next 30 plus years. So uh, yeah, it's an exciting time. Um, that makes number eight, um, that's eight eight uh, chicks that have been fitted with tags out of 37 tags that I have to deploy. So I've only got, uh, I've only got 29 now to do. So uh, it's going to be a busy time ahead over the next two weeks. Okay, so um, on a beautiful, um, increasingly hot and humid day here um, on Bermuda, on Nonsuch Island, uh, it's Jeremy and JP saying goodbye and uh, we'll be updating you on developments as they progress very very um i think it's going to go very fast from this point on so all the best and everybody have a great day